What is happening, everybody? James Hancock here, and I'm back to review Blood Machines, which comes out on May 21st on Shudder. Because it's not available yet, this will be a spoiler-free review, but I'll say right from the word go that I absolutely loved it. I thought it was an absolute blast. It's safe to say that when it comes to genre cinema, that Blood Machines is going to end up being one of the most visually distinctive and beautiful films you will see all year. And at a time where we have almost no new movies to see, the chance to see a visually arresting, transportive experience like Blood Machines, it was precisely what I needed. And I think I'll probably end up watching it like 10 or 20 more times before I'm fully satisfied. This movie comes from the creative team that was behind the music video Turbo Killer, which featured the music of Carpenter Brute, as well as the filmmaking team known as Seth Eckerman. It seems like both the musician as well as the filmmakers like a certain degree of anonymity because nobody's actually operating under the real names. Carpenter Brute is the alias of musician Frank Huis, while Seth Eckerman is the alias for a filmmaking duo Rafael Hernandez and Savitri Jolie Gonfard. I have no idea if I'm saying that second name correctly. In any event, I saw Turbo Killer years ago, thought it was an absolutely killer music video. Video, and periodically over the last few years, I would just throw it on when I had people over because it's so stimulating visually and the music, you can just listen to it on a loop. But a couple days ago when I got access to the press screen for Blood Machines, I figured I was long overdue and going back and checking out some of Carpenter Brute's older music videos. The music videos created by Silver Strain all for his album Leather Teeth. And I can't really put into words or overemphasize just how quickly I completely, totally fell in love with the Carpenter Brute aesthetic. Because as I was watching all these crazy music videos, I realized I was watching an artist who believes in art for art's sake. These music videos are astonishing aesthetic experiences with incredible visuals, insane colors, incredibly addictive music. But even better, scattered throughout a bunch of these old music videos are all these clips and images from old school horror movies, as well as old school erotic movies, or sometimes movies that kind of qualify as both. But what I loved about these music videos is how they were just exercises in pure style where the sole goal seemed to be the maximum amount of stimulation they could create in the viewer. And if you're interested in these old videos, I strongly recommend you hunt them down on Vimeo because Vimeo has far fewer censorship rules than YouTube. But if I were to recommend a couple of these videos, first and foremost, I would recommend Turbo Killer because it's from the same directing team that directed Blood Machines. But Cheerleader Effect, Le Perve, Hairspray Hurricane, and the Maniac cover were all astonishing. Le Perve I particularly enjoyed because it used extensive clips from Lucio Fulci's film Murder Rock. Now Murder Rock's one of those movies from the 80s where you're never quite sure if you're watching the best Italian horror film ever made or the worst or kind of some strange combination of the two. In any event, if you haven't seen Murder Rock, you owe it to yourself to do so. But as soon as I saw this music video and I realized that it was basically a love song or an homage to Murder Rock, I was like, all right, these people are speaking my language. Which brings me full circle back to Blood Machines, which once again, it was directed by the directing duo that goes by the name Seth Eckerman, and it's a sequel to the music video Turbo Killer. And apparently Turbo Killer was made with almost no input from the composer. They almost wanted to create a music video like sight unseen. And apparently Carpenter Brute's sole criteria for the making of the video was the introduction of a particular character who also appears in Blood Machines. But Carpenter Brute was obviously thrilled with how Turbo Killer turned out, which is why we now have Blood Machines to enjoy, which is being described as a cosmic opera, and I think that pretty much covers it. And once again, I'm going to be very careful to avoid any specific spoilers, but in broad strokes, this is a sci-fi space odyssey depicting a battle between humans and artificial intelligence and the possible birth of a new cosmic entity. And it's heartbreakingly short. It comes in three bite-sized episodes that you absolutely would not want to see end. And because the opening and closing credits of each chapter are basically an opportunity for yet another music video within the episodes, like half the total running time of all three episodes total just goes to opening and closing credits over and over and over again. But those are some of the best sequences in the entire experience. So while I was incredibly excited to watch this ahead of time, what caught me off guard was just how rapidly I fell in love with it, basically like 90 seconds into the first episode. Because this is pure, unbridled, unrestrained imagination run wild. It's sci-fi run amok. If you're a fan of the outer space adventures that we see in the cosmic side of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Blood Machines makes those outer space adventures seem very tame and cautious by comparison. And what I realized almost instantly is that this movie is one of the first and far too long to explore the world that was opened up by the anthology animated film Heavy Metal back in 1981. This movie is way less comedic in tone and it's much more about awe and wonder and drama and intensity, but it is equally erotic and it's equally experimental and a lot of its design choices. The design choices are just jaw-dropping from the use of color to the incredible world building. The ships are just chocolate for the eyes, but I love the costumes, the weapons, and there's so many memorable beats and moments where you'll just sit back in your chair and be like, oh my God, this is some of the most gorgeous sci-fi that I've ever seen. And if you're already a fan of Carpenter Brute, as can be expected, the music is killer from start to finish. The full soundtrack's already been uploaded to YouTube, so you can start playing that on a loop right now. 
But what I found as I was watching the movie is that I was constantly involuntarily dancing to the rhythm of the music, whether it's just tapping my foot or wiggling my arms. But this is a movie where people are going to find themselves having incredibly physical responses to the film. What I really craved while watching it was an opportunity to play a video game set in this world. When it comes to the overall style, atmosphere, tone, aesthetic of this filmmaking team, everything is just so metal and hardcore, even like a simple elevator going down to the surface of a planet from a ship. They just make it as hardcore as possible. But I realize I've been ranting and raving quite a bit at this point without saying anything negative about the film. So I will concede that there's one major weak link in the chain, and that would be the acting. The cast is small, and a few of them feel pretty inexperienced, bordering on amateur. But after a couple of minutes, you totally stop noticing, and the acting style starts to kind of grow on you and become part of the experience. And this next detail I wouldn't really say is a flaw or a criticism, but Blood Machines is pretty light on plot. But that can be both good and bad, like a double-edged sword, because it allows for more ambiguity. It allows the movie to feel more mysterious in nature, where the emotions and the feelings of the experience are far more important than the specific structure of the story. I think the people who don't respond to the overall tone of the film are probably going to call attention to that. But for people who whose favorite part of 2001 is the crazy psychedelic stuff in the latter part of the film, they're absolutely going to eat this up. And much like when 2001 came out in the late 60s and it was described as the ultimate trip, and people were encouraged to go to the cinema and take drugs and watch it, something tells me there'll be a lot of people who enjoy indulging in mind-altering substances and watching this movie over and over again. But my biggest takeaway while watching this movie was if this team were to ever get their hands on some legitimate resources, they could easily deliver a game-changing sci-fi experience that could go down as one of the great iconic sci-fi films. And I know I'm sounding very hyperbolic in my praise, but so many sci-fi films just feel derivative of great science fiction films of the past, but every once in a while, like every decade or two, a big one comes along that changes the genre forever. Whether they're talking about Metropolis or 2001 or Blade Runner or whatever the case might be, and I feel like this team that gave us Blood Machines has all the talent in the world. But this is a movie that was financed through Kickstarter. Imagine if a, a studio just brought up a dump truck full of money and said, go nuts, do your thing. But the last spoiler-free detail I want to call attention to is that this movie is wildly, intensely erotic in the best possible way. It's not erotic in the sense that like you're watching like a pornographic film. It's erotic in the sense like you go to a museum or to a theater and you see some wildly experimental ballet. It's incredibly artistic erotica, but there's no getting around the fact that this film is absolutely filled to the gills with exquisitely sculpted, absolutely perfect physiques, wearing not a single stitch of clothing. And I know a lot of people come completely undone when they're when they're confronted with sex and cinema for whatever reason. But for me, I'm 100% in favor. And without giving anything away, the way these bodies are employed as the film builds towards its climax. And I'm struggling with how to even describe it without giving it away, but if you're a fan of DC Comics or Marvel Comics and you're familiar with various cosmic entities that basically run the universe, imagine if you're watching a small army of nude ghosts and spirits and like cosmic entities all converging to make something greater than itself. You're starting to get somewhere close to approximating the completely wild, mind-shattering ending, which just had me grinning from ear to ear. I absolutely love the ending. So clearly, I absolutely love and adore this movie. I'm going to watch it many times. I think it will leave a lot of people scratching their heads in bewilderment, especially people who demand really concrete, specific answers, elaborating upon or filling in the holes in the plot. But for people who like movies that are overwhelming, sensory-expanding experiences, I think Blood Machines is going to be right up their alley. And I think when a lot of people making more conventional science fiction films see this, they're going to realize just how cautious and tame and risk-averse their movies feel by comparison. So absolutely 100% check out this movie on May 21st when it comes out on Shudder. Definitely check out the music video Turbo Killer, which is already available on YouTube, which gives you a really good idea of the overall style, tone, and flavor of Blood Machines ahead of time. And then if you've got a taste for the rough stuff, hunt down Carpenter Brute's music videos on Vimeo. They are going to absolutely blow your mind. In any event, that's all I got to say about this particular movie. I hope you enjoyed my little rant. If you did, please consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, hitting that notification bell, and let me know what you think down in the comments below. And you can always find me on Twitter at Colbrex if you want to talk immediately. But I can't thank you for watching the video. I really appreciate it. But more importantly, as always, onwards and upwards.